Welcome back. The boys are saying, come on, let's play, but I know better. It's time to get to work. If you've been following along, you know that I've built some straight and some curved stringers. And we're just waiting to run these trains <laughs> on the track once I get those stringers replaced. But there's some other business we need to take care of before we can get to that. Unfinished business. All right, spoiler alert. Just in case you were wondering. The Grand Hotel skin did not hold up to the weather very well. <laughs> Nick says we need to get a points counter and ding, 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 ding. Every time we, we've managed to put one of the chuck it balls through a couple of the walls now, we need to just make a, like a tennis ball cannon and rack up points. Ding, 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 ding. <laughs> I like it. Of course, the corner drugstore just crumbled. I, uh, <laughs> I need to do some casting. Oh, right there. So what do you think? 10 points for the windows and 25 points for the towers? I don't know. We'll see. All right. The real reason we're out here? I think you can see I've got one stringer. That one's new still. Two new stringers. Oh, three new stringers. Four new stringers. So, hopefully, that'll take care of the damage sections. We shall see. Well, I'm going to go to voiceovers for this. You can see the pile of scrap stringers there, and it's going to grow. This is pretty much what's left of the straight and the curved section going into the climb up to the upper loop. So this is going to go a lot faster than it actually did in real life. This is the first curved stringer installed. And of course it's connected to the first straight stringer. See what I mean? It happened a lot quicker here than it did in real life. This was a couple hours of work here. In the center next to that, you can see I've disconnected the other curve stringer from the straight section. The other straight section, I should say. So here's half of the stringer that we need to replace. It's still attached to the post on the right, but it's resting on the block there to the left. Rotted off the other. In fact, this next close-up of the left end shows that entire section is rotted all the way to the connection to the next stringer. If you look close, you can see that the end of the stringer it needs to connect to has a bit of rot too, and we'll have to make some repairs there to complete the connection to the new one. Using those blocks on the right, and just like magic, another hour disappears. <laughs> and the second curve stringer is installed. Looking good so far. Unfortunately, we're going to need another straight stringer. So I borrowed the one that I was using for the new upper loop. But that's alright. We'll make more. And even more. You can see we're going to need another straight one. And there on the very right, you can see the other new straight one still waiting to go in. So fast forward to another straight stringer put together. And this is a very good view of how these stringers connect together. The join starts by loosening the screws on the clevis, as well as the tongue of the other stringer. Then using quick clamps, we hold everything together while we drill a pilot hole and put a screw in. Fast forward to the other end, and this is stringer number five. This will complete the inner section. 
you can see there at the top I still have one more straight one to put in on the outside. Here's a better shot of that. Same story on this end, had to do a little rebuilding because it's a little rotted here too. So add another hour and the last stringer, the last straight stringer, stringer number six is installed and the track is put together. Well, almost. I had to custom cut a piece that I borrowed for the upper loop and totally forgot about. Dremel saw made quick work of it, add a couple split jaw clamps and it's ready to go in. Now all the track is connected and in place. So I'll pull back and pan left here so you can have the big picture view of all the stringers replaced. Basically all six along the back wall. But don't be fooled, this is an entire weekend's worth of work compressed into six minutes of video. But wait, there's more. All right, welcome back. Here we are doing more <laughs> rotted stringer replacement. Imagine that. <laughs> All right, I don't know if you can see down there. The idea here is to replace these stringers, and I'll get a close up in a minute with four by fours beneath and it will become the edge of a, a deck for the new upper loop which is still lake desolate if you will all right so you can see how this is just crumbling and the problem is the deck screws are just too much of a hazard for the pups so this all has to go it seems like every day I'm pulling a new piece off and pulling screws out of it. So there's the project. Well, here's everything cut up. Two, three sets. I think you can see it. So next is to disconnect all the track and replan the stringers, remove those, and replace it with this. And I cut the carpet out in there too. Well, there you go. Another rotted stringer. I'm not replacing it with stringers this time. Ground contact rated 4x4. Cut at the proper angle. I'll bring you back when the set's in place. All right, well, we're not quite finished. <laughs> uh, said I'd bring you back when they were in place. I should mention this is yet another weekend that we're doing this this being replacing more rotted stringers but it has to be done the idea here is we're gonna make this into the first step up to a deck where we have Lake Desolate now first things first I did a quick and dirty sketch where the stringers meet with the inner 4x4 four four. essentially it becomes the stringer to do that, we have to match the grade, which is why you see the level there. It's important to match the height of the stringer to the height of these 4x4s. You can see here where on the right, the post where the stringers used to be is the same height now. Once those 4x4s are aligned, that post will be removed. Eventually, these will be pinned with rebar. So we're actually replacing two stringers and I ended up having to cut yet another set of 4x4s to match or meet the end of the existing stringer there on the right. And here's a better view. That stringer's iffy and I'll probably have to replace it too. Regardless, that stringer's gonna have to come up a bit to match the end of that 4x4. So fast forward to the next weekend, and Briggle's asking me, please, Dad, can you move that stringer back some for me? I'm sick of tripping over it. It's only been a couple of days, actually. But I think you can tell that uh, I decided to get rid of that stringer. <laughs> actually, the dogs pounding on it got rid of it for me, or made up my mind for me. 
if you look to the right you can see that I'm moving that stringer inboard of where it used to sit. I plan on pulling this all inside the inboard of where it used to sit while I'm at it since I need to build yet another 20 foot diameter stringer. I had actually pulled this into like 18 and a half foot but I don't know if you can see that straight part or not. That straight part in the track I should say. That used to be curve track but Briggles run into it and plowed over it so many times he straightened it out. <laughs> so we'll make it less of an obstacle for him while we're at it. So the first full weekend in May, we're going to get this finished up because family is here tomorrow. This is how we left it the other day. I kind of cheated though. When I was out here with the boys at lunchtime on Friday, I decided to get that stringer put together. Or at least the slats for it cut to size. I actually got it put together after supper. And by put together, I mean the stringers put together, not assembling it. Once I get this turf cut back along the edges, I can sink the rest of the posts. Here's a better view of what I mean. You can see I already have one post in place and I need to sink another. And I'm probably going to need another one at the end there where it meets up with that 4x4. Four four. But I think that's going to be a tomorrow thing since we're losing daylight quickly. As much as I want to continue, I have to put it off till morning. And we got to early start here so about an hour in this is uh, where we're at putting the track in place getting close but I still need to bend that straight section back to a curve here we are about an hour later and you can see how much more I've gotten done the Sun finally did decide to come out so you can see I've got my umbrella there because I need the shade to finish up you can see my rail bender here and I'm making the curves fit. The change in radius by bringing the stringers inboard gave me a little bit extra track there. It's not much but it's enough to make a difference. I think you can see better here what I'm talking about. You can see there's a few inches overlap there at the top left and you can see at the bottom right a better view of the rail bender. A bit of a break to play with the boys and then back to it. It took all day, but now everything's in place. Time to run some trains. Once we clean and test the track with a couple egg liners. And of course we play more while that's going on. But it all leads up to the moment we've been waiting for. Running trains, and not a moment to spare. Well, we have enough time to sit back and enjoy watching the trains for a while anyway. Alright, running trains.
Well, we hope you've enjoyed this, and thank you for watching. That's the end of the stringer replacement, for now anyway. <laughs> Join us next time. We'll see you then.